Hello and welcome to this week's IG Live. Today we are going to be talking to another longtime member of MKB and that is Janelle Diller. She, along with Lisa Travis, is the creator of the Pack and Go Girls series. This is a wonderful series uh, for kids of chapter books, adventure stories, traveling around the world. They have books that are set in Austria, Mexico, Thailand, Brazil, and Australia. And these are all fiction books, although they also have nonfiction companion books that go along with them. But um, it's really a wonderful series. We've definitely enjoyed reading it in our house, and Janelle is one of the people behind it. They also have an illustrator, Adam Turner, who's part of the team. But Janelle also writes fiction for adults, so we're gonna hear about that. Um, she has a series that she's written, Not Never Enough Flamingos, Never Enough Sisters, and Never Enough Lilacs, as well as one called The Virus. So we're gonna to talk to her just about how she started writing, and then what was the inspiration behind the Pack and Go Girls series. If you're joining us for the first time, we do this every Thursday, usually at noon Eastern time, that's nine o'clock Pacific, uh, 10 o'clock Mountain, 11 o'clock Central, hello. And although watch for announcements because, you know, we have, members spread out over many different time zones so sometimes we have to adjust the time in order to accommodate that i've interviewed people who are in india and china so as you can imagine sometimes we have to work to find a, a time that works for all of us because i'm here in california but hello <laughs> hello Good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. I, I was saying earlier that sometimes I think I do this series almost as much for me as anyone else because, for example, I've worked with you at, with, and Lisa with Pack and Go Girls for probably since the beginning of MKB, which is more than 10 years, and yet we've never talked face to face before today. So <laughs> this is, yeah, this is such a treat for me to get to, to know you in a better way and, and, and to get to share also with our audience a little more about what you do. Well, um, first of all, I apologize for being late. I, I uh, told Leanna to everybody who's watching or listening, what a Luddite I am. I'm sad with technology and we got on early so I wouldn't have any bobbles and then somehow I still managed to screw it up. So I'm so <laughs> glad I'm here and I can see you. <laughs> well, I am glad you're here and I think that this is wonderful that you were willing to do this for the first time. Uh, this is your first time being on Instagram Live. So I appreciate that you were willing to take the, to to do the work to, to be here for the first time and and I hopefully it's a good experience for you too. I hope so too. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and I just want to say too, um, I really appreciate what you have done over the years with multicultural kid blogs. I think I think it's just um, it's a great way to reach out to people and expose them to all kinds of things, even if they just stay in their same location always or if they travel the world. So yeah, well, thank you. And, then, and I think that your your books are a big part of that, because like you said, books are such a great way to travel the world, even if you're not physically able to leave where you are. And it's it's so great for kids. But why don't we start off first? You can introduce yourself and tell people about your work. I mean, obviously, we have the Pack and Go Girls, but you also write fiction for adults. I do. I do. Um, I am a writer. Um, I think I have over 20 books published. Mm -hmm with a range of nonfiction. I started out with books for the construction industry, so very exciting. Um, some grammar textbooks. I have adult fiction, I have kids books. And in my other life, I'm an executive coach and faculty for a leadership program that um, is it's an international manage, management consulting firm that I work for. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about that job is it's taken me all over the world and I love to travel. So I've been lucky enough to work in Japan and China, all over Southeast Asia, India, Saudi Arabia, all over Europe. And I love it especially because they're paying the bills and I travel better than when I pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And, and I know that writing is something that's been important to you since you were very young. When did you know that it was what you wanted to do for a living? Well, um, I don't remember a time when I didn't have a passion for reading and writing. I, I loved I loved the look and feel, even the smell of books as a preschooler, you know, just turning those pages. I loved the way I felt like I was friends with the characters and then I traveled with them to places far away from my small Kansas town. In addition to reading, I loved writing. I don't really know how young I was when I knew I wanted to be a writer, 
But I have this distinct memory of when I was in first grade and a college student who was interested in teaching came to my class. She gave a questionnaire that I thought was a test and that made me very nervous because I wasn't a very good student. And I had three questions. The first was easy. What's your name? And I was very happy I knew how to spell my name. The second question was, uh, was easy too and that was what's your favorite subject? And I knew the answer to that too. Um, and you can probably assume that it was reading or writing, but no, as much as I love those subjects, um, I didn't love them nearly as much as the one I put, recess. Oh, that's such a great kid answer. Yeah, even now it's my favorite thing. I've structured my entire life about how I can play more. <laughs> so the last question was tricky. It was, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I knew the answer to this one too. Already as a first grader, I knew I wanted to be an author. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell stories and write books. I wanted to create characters that readers would be friends with. And I wanted to take readers to places that they had never gone. I wanted to book. But instead, I wrote that I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I should have written an author, but way back then I thought only girls from big cities could be authors. I thought only people who were already important could be writers. Um, fortunately, I didn't let those ideas stop, and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, and as I said, I've got over 20 books published. You know, I, Leanne, I like to tell this story when I do author visits at school, because I want kids to never let the funny ideas in their heads stop them from being someone amazing. If mm. they want to do it, they should work hard and make, make it happen. And I'm glad I didn't let what was in my head stop me from following what was in my heart. I love that story because I think that that's uh, that a lot of kids have that mm -hmm. that kind of thought either that they they think that somebody like them can't do it or they nobody they know has done it before and so they they might let that hold them back or sometimes the adults in their lives kind of put that on them that that they think is not going to happen. So I love that story and now of course you're a published author with more than 20 books, including, uh, as we mentioned, as uh, fiction for grownups. And one thing that I noticed is that your, your books often take on these really big social issues, just to mention a few of them, like the Me Too movement or how to confront evil. Why is fiction such a great way to dig into these issues? I think this is a great question. And for a bit of background on my writing, my first novel for adults was The Virus, a political thriller that came out in 2015. And I'm very proud because it was a Colorado Humanities for the Book finalist. Um, and it's about a pandemic that sweeps the country. And everyone is clamoring for a vaccine and the government scrambles to create one. I don't know if this sounds familiar to anyone. Um, unfortunately, it turns out that the vaccine isn't what they think it is. The last sentence of the back cover description that I wrote way back in 2015 is this. The technology is real. Washington is corrupt. It's only a matter of time before this isn't just an intriguing idea for a political thriller. And then we hit 2020. Uh, my intent with this story was to get people thinking about how technology is taking over our lives and how it allows the government to not just um, be invasive, but controlling. And the question becomes, what acts of civil disobedience would, be, would you be willing to commit? The other adult fiction is my Never Enough trilogy, Never Enough Flamingos, Never Enough Sisters, and Never Enough Lilacs, which uh, the Flamingos book was a 2017 Kansas Notable Book Selection, and I add this in because I'm so proud of these awards. Um, the trilogy is set in rural Kansas in a Mennonite community in the 1930s and 40s, and begins in the heart of the Dust Bowl when farm families were losing their farms right and left. In this small Mennonite community, Simon Yoder, a very wealthy church member, steps in and generously saves many of the farmers with loans. To pay them off, the farmers hire out their daughters to work off the loans. So the girls cook and clean and do whatever hired girls do, except it turns out that the hired girls at this wealthy man's house do a lot more than cook and clean because Simon Yoder is a man who steals the souls of young girls. This one is very much about the dark subject of sexual abuse, although I tried to keep it very readable with lots of quirky humor. But even more, the stories about how anytime there's hierarchy and power, there are vulnerable people, mm -hmm. always children, 
often women. It's also a reminder of the tough choices people make every day. In this story, the choice is, do you save the farm that's been in the family for generations but sacrifice your daughter? Or do you save your daughter but lose the farm and your only means of keeping your family from starvation? You know, whether we know it or not, every one of us knows someone who's been sexually abused. But even today, it's very difficult, if not taboo, to talk about it. When, when um, Flamingos came out, I have a really good friend who told me that she loved the book, but she was sorry I'd written, about, written it about Mennonites because she said that wasn't her experience. And then a couple of months later, she confessed to me that what she said wasn't true. And she told me that when her own mother was on her deathbed at 92, she finally told the story of being repeatedly raped by her stepfather. Mm. Everyone in the family knew, but no one could or would do anything because if they confronted him, it meant they would have no place to live, nothing to eat, nowhere to go. Mm. You know, my book got my friend to talk about it openly for the first time, and that's why fiction is such a powerful way to shine a light on the darkness. Reading about something gives us a safe place to learn about something for the first time or discover we're not alone in our experiences. It gives us a vocabulary for talking about issues and events that we don't know how to talk, talk about. It teaches us. Yeah. Yeah, which is it's important, like you said, for for adults and for children. Um, I think maybe because it kind of resonates on an emotional level. Like you said, it's that safe space to kind of experience and and and. Um, learn about something that maybe isn't your experience or see your own experience in a new way, which kind of segues into your, your work for children because as, as while it doesn't take on as maybe as heavy issues as your adult fiction does, it still is a way for, for kids to explore new places, new ideas, new situations that maybe they haven't been in, but then kind of see what is familiar to them as well. So of course I'm talking about the Pack and Go Girls series um, so can you tell us more about that? That's something that you started with, uh, with Lisa Travis. What was the inspiration behind starting it? And maybe a little bit about the series for those who haven't read it before. Yeah, just, um, just a bit of background. Um, it's a nationally award-winning travel and adventure series for young girls. We've targeted first through third graders. Uh, readers tour haunted castles in Austria. They catch thieves in Mexico. They save dolphins and turtles in Brazil. And they search for lost golden turtles in Thailand and chase aliens in Australia. So we take them all over the world. And they always meet a girl their own age and solve mysteries together. They're a ton of fun. Um, plus, we've tried to introduce a spectrum of American characters that reflect American diversity. So we have a Chinese American girl, a black girl, a Cuban American, and a Native American descent. And this has been really important to us too, because we want kids to see themselves on the pages of these books. When I, when I wrote the Australia series, which has the Chinese American girl in it, one of my reviewers for the Australian series, which included the Chinese American girl, said, I would have loved to have had a book like this with a girl who looked like me. That thought would have never occurred to me as I read my own early chapter books decades ago. And what a loss for both of us. You know, several years ago, Lisa Travis, my business partner, ran across a study that said that 90% of the characters in kids' books were white. Only 10% of books had multicultural characters. You had a better chance of having a main character as a truck than you did as a Hispanic kid. Um, and, you know, if you think about that, here's another way to wrap your head around this. What if 90% of children's books only had boy characters? What would girls feel about themselves? What would they think about boys? And just as important, what would boys understand about girls if they never read books with female characters? Right. I, I, I just think this is so important. So back to your original question, how do we come up with the idea? Um, Lisa was the one to, who came up with the idea of a travel adventure series for young girls. And I love the idea. I grew up traveling. I knew it was the best kind of education you could ever have. Um, my dad was an adventure traveler, so I grew up visiting the Amazon rainforest and Russian steppes decades before I ever saw London and Paris. It was life-shaping. When, uh, when I was nine, 
my mom and dad took our family, my two older sisters and me, and our 20-month-old sister on a six-week tour of Latin America. And if you can imagine what kind of adventure that was in the 1960s. Um, a moment I'll never forget was when we were in Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina, and we were spending an afternoon on the gigantic plaza in front of the pink house, which is the equivalent of the White House. The plaza was filled with people and benches, 57 million pigeons. My sister told me in that moment, now Janelle, bend down and feed the pigeons like this with the pink house in the background. Next year, when you're in fourth grade, your geography book will have a picture of two girls doing this very thing. And you can imagine my first day of fourth grade, the first thing I did was rapidly flip through my geography book to find that very picture. As much as the actual trip exploded my world, that, that moment crystallized in my mind that all these other photos of people and places in that geography book actually existed too. And it made me insensibly curious. and spot crocodiles or walk the ancient steps of Machu Picchu, but you can read stories about other places and experiences. And, and it gives them new things just simply by picking up a book. You know, I, I'm reminded of Anne Quinlan's famous quote, books are the plane and the train and the road. They are the destination and the journey. They are home. And if we can give that to kids, there's a greater gift. I love that quote. I had I hadn't heard that before. That's wonderful. And, and and I have to say something that I really appreciated about your books. I mean, one, like you said, kids, it really introduces kids to the world and they can see themselves and not just um, the diversity is not just in where they go. As you mentioned, it's also in the main characters themselves, as you say, representing the diversity of America. Um, but one of the things that I thought is so interesting about it is it really models for kids how to respectively uh, learn about other countries because as you know the US and Europe we have a reputation of traveling but not necessarily being very respectful in how we do it so I think that is such a key element to what you do in the book and that they make a local friend and you know they have this really um, kind of authentic respectful uh, understanding of the culture why was that so important to you I, well first of all thank you for your kind words because this has been critical to us from the very beginning. And it's been a challenge because we don't want to be simplistic or to stereotype either the American girls or their international cultures. Yet, at the end of the day, we are writing for six to 10 year olds, so we don't want to be too intense either. I mean, you mentioned it further. We can't do those heavy topics. And yet with, with each series, we do try and address some things that are more significant in a way that we believe young kids can manage. Um, so first of all, we do our research. We do tons of research. And then we also always have people from that country review it and critique it for anything that might not be accurate or otherwise be offensive. And it helps that we've traveled to most of the countries in our series. But as you know, Leanna, traveling there and living there are two very different things. And they're both still very different from being from that culture and country. So, you know, we, we pay a lot of attention to that um, because one of the things we don't want to do is turn, uh, turn um, our readers into thinking, oh, they're so smart or so whatever. Um, one of the things we think about a lot is how important the own voices movement is and what that means for our theories. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, American characters reflect the diversity of the U.S., but that makes it pretty tough to write from that own voice's perspective then. Um, our hope is that by doing our research and meticulously following up with our reviewers, that the books are at least accurate and authentic. And then we hope that kids are curious enough about the characters or the other countries that they look for books by writers who are of that ethnicity or from those countries. I love that that's something that you're so sensitive to and and conscious of as you're as you're crafting your stories and uh, another aspect that really struck me is that um especially for girls i mean i think anybody can enjoy your series but uh, it's really geared towards girls and to see themselves as protagonists 
they're problem solvers, they're adventurers. I think that's something that's very different than you a lot of times see in the media, you know, to have them in that in that role. What did you hope that what do you hope that that the young readers of the books take away from it? Well, ultimately, we hope to inspire them to embrace adventure, to be curious, to value the things that are similar and to celebrate the differences that make us unique. Most of all, to be less afraid. You know, these days, I think fear is such a primary um, message that we all get. And when we read about characters from other countries, when we read about people who are different from us, we learn more. We learn more about ourselves and we learn more to be more accepting. And ultimately, we want our readers to be global, global kids. I love that. And it's, it is for anybody who, who's watching who hasn't read any of the books, I really highly recommend them. They're wonderful books. And, and as, as much as we're talking about kind of all these high level ideas of what we as adults know is happening in the stories and what it does for readers, I think for young readers, it's also just really fun. It's, I mean, it's an adventure story. It's really interesting. And, and often there's some kind of mystery. So it's, it's a page turner for them. Um, so thank you for taking the time to talk with us today and, and to share about that and about your work for, for adults. Before I let you go, could you share with us uh, what's next for you for the Pack and Go Girl series? Do you have books that you're working on right now or, or what are you doing now? Well, thank you for asking. Um, I, to be honest, COVID threw us a curveball. And then we had a number of personal things happen in our lives. And so the writing just kind of got put off to the side. We hope to be back this year with um, the first book in the next series, Africa, and because that's the last continent that we have not addressed. And that's a challenging one. Because where do you start with Africa, with all those countries? And they're so different. Um, so that's going to be part of our challenge. But we do hope to, to bring that um, out in the next year. And if you are just learning about our books, please go to packandgogirls.com. So it's P-A-C-K-N-G-O-G-I-R-L-S.com. And we've got tons of free resources there, both for teachers or if you just want to keep your kids busy next week while you're taking that turkey if you're in the U.S. Um, and just lots of fun, free things where you can learn more about all the different countries and um, you know, just, just have fun with that. And then if you join, um, we'll send you free exploration kit that has some fun games that you can play with your kids and uh, just expand, expand their horizons. And I promise you, we won't bombard you with too many emails. <laughs> so, uh, what and, you so answer with us? and again, that's packandgogirls.com, but the and is just the end. Correct. Pack and goes girls, and uh, we've also talked about your fiction for adults, and that's uh, for grownups. That's JanelleDiller.com, I think. <laughs> so you can check that out there as well. And yeah. thank you for everybody that's joined us. If you're joining us late, this is going to be up on Instagram in a few minutes, and then we'll later have it up on our YouTube channel. Janelle, it's so great to talk with you. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And enjoy your Thanksgiving um, if you're in the U.S. and if you're not in the U.S. Enjoy whatever next week brings for you. <laughs> yes. Thanks. And have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.